In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create these super pretty resin finished hexagon tiles. Fluid painting has never been easier, so stick around, that's coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Art with Jay Monteith and this week I'm really excited to be able to bring to you a very very easy tutorial on how you can create these super pretty hexagon resin tiles. These are really really popular right now, trending large and I wanted to share with you how you can create your own very very easily. You only need several products including the resin. There's no mixing of paints, no silicone. So without further ado, let's get started and let me share with you all the things that you need in order to create this week's project. Okay, so as you can see here, I have all of the items needed for this week's project laid out here on the table in front of me, and I'm just going to go over them quickly so you can have everything ready to go before you begin. And any of the art materials or products that I use within this video, I will have the colors listed in the description box below. So if you see any of the color combinations I use and you really, really like those, you can check those out. And then if you want to, you can go onto my web shop and purchase any of these items. But let's just talk about quickly the other materials that you need and then we can get started. So first of all, you need your hexagon tiles, obviously. I just picked these up at my local hardware building supply store. This one is actually from Home Depot and it comes on a mesh sheet that you can just remove the backing from and then you can work on each tile individually. So you'll need your hexagon tiles. Then I like to have on hand just a mini level, sure that your surface is completely flat and even. And then that way, when you apply your product to your substrate, everything distributes evenly and nicely on your surface. And then you'll need a plastic mixing container and a mixing utensil for your resin. I do prefer plastic over glass. It's just easier to uh, clean out and reuse again. And then of course the popsicle stick you can just discard when you're done. So you'll need a container for your mixing and utensil to stir. Then of course you'll need your actual resin. My preference is art resin, especially for art and art projects. There's lots of different resins on the market. This is my preference. You don't have to use it, but I do highly recommend it. So I'm going to be using art resin. Then to have as a barrier against my tile and the resin and the art product, I'm going to be taping the underside with just some regular green painter's tape. This way uh, it's just easier to remove uh, once you have the cured drips from the resin and the product on the back side. You can just peel off the tape and you're ready to go. No muss, no fuss. So have some green painter's tape on hand. To finish off the back of our tile nicely, I'm going to be using and cutting out some felt. So you need some scissors and a, a couple pieces of felt. You can use cork if you choose. I prefer felt only because I find cork sometimes tends to crumble or break apart. So using those. Then I highly recommend using some nitrate powder free gloves. Obviously this is good to uh, prevent the resin from getting onto your hands and sticking. As well, one of the main issues when people use resin and they're handling their substrate or their artwork, they're picking it up all the time, constantly, and what happens is you get oils from your skin naturally depositing onto the sides of your substrate. So you may have run into issues where the resin is pulling away and repelling from those sides, and that's primarily because you've been handling uh, the work with your bare hands. So you really need to work with gloves and handle your substrate with gloves on. And then that way you prevent and avoid any type of oils getting onto your surface. Now, before you actually begin to use products on these tiles, I would recommend though that you thoroughly clean it initially with some alcohol. I just have 91% here and a paper towel. Clean it off and then that way you can really be uh, sure that you've eliminated any of that oily buildup and residue on your tile. Lastly, you want to get that flawless bubble free finish. Then you want to use a butane torch. This is also by Art Resin and by no means do you have to use this particular brand. You can pick up lots of mini butane torches at your building supply store, but just don't forget you need the, obviously the butane refill into the tool in order to uh, use it. So butane torch and refill, fill that up and it's ready to go. And then finally, the actual product we're going to be using on these tile, we're going to be using some of my favorites by Pebo, and I'm going to be using the V-Trail and the Moon based products today. They come in a, a variety of different colors. And the great thing about these particular ones is that 
on their own when they interact with one another they produce some really nice amazing effects and these are alkyd oil based products you don't need to mix them and stir them in other containers and add silicone or flow trail or anything like that these work fine on their own when they interact with one another so again the v trail and the moon and i'm going to be trying lots of different color combinations on these tiles today okay so i think i've covered everything let's move this all aside and begin with our first step Okay, I've got my gloves on, so I know I'm not gonna get any, any oils on to the tile. And I'm just going to quickly clean off the surface with some alcohol using a paper towel and just wiping over the tops of each one. Just remember that alcohol smells quite strong, so just work in a well-ventilated area. And if you need to, wear a mask. I actually have a 3M Tech Mask. Uh, that you can use filters and replace those with and it's certified against organic vapors. So really, really handy to have if you're working a lot with, you know, chemicals, sprays, adhesives, paints, that sort of thing. Just wanna make sure you've got your health and uh, safety in check. So I'll leave a link to that particular mask as well in the video here. And if you uh, want to purchase one of those and you can, so always good to have one on hand. Okay, those are cleaned off. And what I'm going to do next is actually adhere the tape to the backing or the bottom of these tiles. So I'll just start off with one and I'll trim the edges with my scissors. Just be easier to do <clears throat> as I go along here. Grab my scissors and then I'll just trim the underside here on each one. There, really easy to do and it's going to eliminate a lot of heartache <laughs> when the resin dries. You can just pull that off and it'll be perfect. Okay, all of my tiles have now been covered on the back side with the tape and we can move on to the next step. And what I'm going to do is just put out a few paper uh, mini cups so that I can sit the tile up off of the surface only because we're going to be pouring some product on and it's going to drip down and I don't want it sitting on the actual table itself. It's just be too messy. So I'll put a few of these out so we can uh, sit and allow these to dry on these cups. And the great thing about this project is it's so simple. The outcome and the result is really, really effective and it makes it look like you've put in so much work to produce these amazing tiles and really it doesn't take much effort other than time. You, you do need some time to allow each product to dry. And of course, we'll be using the Peebo product first. We have to let that dry for 24 hours before moving on to the resin stage. These would also look really good as uh, backsplash tiles. So I may do that in the future as a project. I think those would look quite cool. But let's start now with our first color combination. And I have set out some colors already here aside. I'm going to start off with the uh, blues I think that I have here. I'm really drawn to uh, the marine blues and the teal blues right now. I'm doing that a lot in my work, especially teal. So I'm going to use Vitrell Cobalt Blue and the Moon Turquoise for this particular combination. Just make sure you use one of each. You don't want to use two of the same uh, Vitrell, Vitrell, Moon, Moon. You want to use one of each so that when they interact with each other, then they produce some really nice effects. So Vitrell Cobalt Blue and the Moon Turquoise. And then I'm also going to add some of the Moon Pearl Gold on all of the tile because I think that will look great with that extra shimmer and effect. So Let's start off with this color combination here. And just remember, you need to stir these. Don't shake them. Just stir them lightly with popsicle stick, stir stick, whatever you have. So we'll stir these and then we'll start with one of our tiles here. Wiping it off with a paper towel.
Okay, start off with this one here. Actually, I think I'm just gonna pour it directly onto the tile, like this. Some blue, a little bit of gold. And you can see it reacting already. Now you really don't have to do much. It's very similar to fluid pouring. So I'm just going to leave that like that. So I'm just going to leave that. I think that's done as is. Move the gold over here and move on to the next color. I think I'm gonna try this one. This is Vitrell Crimson and the chocolate in moon and again i think i will stir them a little bit just to make sure they're combined really well the vitrile if you didn't know these are great on glassware uh, it's made and designed for glass you can use these products on a number of different surfaces not just tile obviously you can use them on put it on canvas plastic, wood, all kinds of different surfaces. So they are great products. And again, they are a bit smelly. So if you want to put on that uh, vapor mask, then please do so. So this is the crimson and we'll see, we'll see what happens here. And let's put the moon right down the center. And a little bit of gold. Okay, chocolate and crimson in that one. All right, the next colors I'm trying are the vitro pink and the moon lilac. That one's pretty, I'm not even gonna move it. I think that looks actually kinda cool. I might try the next one, just pouring in a line and see what happens. But that looks pretty good. Now the other thing I might do with these, if I don't like the way it's pouring over the edges in certain spots, I might, when it's dried, I might just take my metallic uh, Pebo marker, my four artist marker, which I really love, and just cover the edges to give it that effect. Hmm, that one's pretty. I like that one. Okay, on to the next. I'm not liking that one as much. So maybe I'll pour something else on that one. Maybe I'll just pour a little bit more gold. Shall we do it? Let's do it. It's looking pretty good. All right, this one actually filled in, so it does spread a little bit there. And I like the way the effect of this kind of wavy, curvy line has been achieved. And I think I'd like to do the same here. I'm not really liking the way these ones are going. So I'm actually going to attempt to change it up a little bit by pouring some more product right over the top of this one. Okay, that looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah, those two I like the best so far. So let's see what we can do with the turquoise and the mystic green. More of a sophisticated color combination. I think that looks quite good, although this is darker than what I anticipated. And 
All right, I'm just gonna mess around with a few other color combinations. All right, I'm fairly happy with the way these have turned out now. I actually did mess around with these two a little bit more. As you can see, I've actually covered the entire surface and doodled into the product on both of these. And then it created more of a marbled uh, look and effect. And I, I like the way that these have now come along. The rest are good here. I like the way that they flow on each. I'm going to mark down the colors that I use for each combination. And I'm going to just cover it over top with a frame just so that it covers the perimeter of these tiles. Come back 24 hours later, see how they've turned out. And then we'll move on to the resin stage. Okay, it has been 24 hours and we're ready to move on to the resin stage. Everything is now dried, it looks great. I am happy with the way these have turned out so far. And I'm going to now mix my resin. And because these are small tiles, each one will probably just take about an ounce. So I'm actually going to do six ounces in total. So this particular product is a two-part epoxy. You need three ounces of each. So I have my six ounces marked here, so I'm going to do three of the actual resin and three ounces of the hardener. So I will mix this up and stir for three minutes. Okay, that's been mixed for three minutes. And now I'm just going to pour over each tile evenly and distribute an ounce over each or eyeball it really okay it's now been poured and I'm just gonna take my popsicle stick and just help it to go over the edges here nicely All right, looking good, looking shiny. Now I'm gonna take my little torch, turn it on. It's really hard when you have gloves on. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to take off my glove. There we go, just slipping with the glove on. And then I just like to get down to eye level so I can see the bubbles. And you really don't want to hesitate too long, just very quickly back and forth, just enough to touch the resin just to get rid of the bubbles. Essentially, that's it. And of course, just so you know, you don't have to seal these, okay? Because these are uh, alkyd oil-based products, it's not going to fade. They're light fast, so you don't have to worry about that fading over time. There's no need to seal them with any type of spray or UV protection, even though the art resin does contain a UV uh, protection in it. Uh, for this particular project, you don't have to worry because I'm not using alcohol inks as I usually do in my projects. I'm just using these oil-based products from Peebo. So they're fine, light fast on their own. Uh, no need to worry about that. And we're gonna come back in 24 hours take off the backing of the tape and put on our felt and we'll be good to go. It's the next day. I've allowed my resin to cure for 24 hours. And as you can see here, I've got my frame. So I'm just going to lift this off and see how these turned out. Hopefully we don't have any issues, no bubbles. We'll take a look here, just move some other stuff out of the way here. Oh, wow, those look really, really good. Very shiny. Ooh, these are pretty. And you can see here the underside, why it's so important to tape the underside because you get those drips that just cure and it's really hard to get those off when you don't have the tape there on any surface. So 
Okay, let's peel the backing off. Okay, all of the backing of the tape has now been removed, as you can see here. There's just a little bit of um, paint that seeped underneath, but really I wanted to make sure that the actual cured resin uh, was safe underneath the tape, and that seems to have done the trick. So I'm not really concerned about this part because I'm just going to be covering it with felt anyway. Now, I did mention earlier on in the video, if you wanted to touch up the sides with a, a marker, you can do that. I have a favorite that I like. It's definitely one of my favorites and a great way to finish off the sides if you wanted to do that. So for example, on this particular one, if you wanted to touch up with some gold on the edges here with this particular pen, you can do that. It's very simple and it's permanent. It's uh, also oil-based. And the great thing about this pen is that it's obviously the same hue, same shade, same pigment as what is already in the product here already so it's going to be an exact match which is perfect now you may not wish to do that another idea uh, is to simply take off the edges so if you don't like the edges on the tile you can remove it with an exacto knife just obviously be extremely careful when you're doing this and what you can do is once you've peeled that off you can just clean it off with a little bit of alcohol. And then what I like to do is take another one of my favorite pens, this one by the Faber-Castell. This is the Pitt Artist Pen. It's White 101. And this is an India ink. It's waterproof, it's light fast, it's acid free, and it's permanent. So if you wanted to touch up the sides of your tiles so it matches, you can simply go over with this marker on the sides. And then you have a pure white edge going all the way around. So I like the clean edge as well. So I'm probably going to finish off uh, by using the this particular pen. I do like that finish. And as you can see here, I've already gone over with one uh, round of the white marker. I may go over it again with two. And then I'm just going to finish it off with some felt and I've cut out a few pieces here as you can see and then I'm just going to use some spray adhesive outside this is the Krylon spray adhesive I really like this one also well there it is guys the finished tile project thanks again for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give this video a like and a share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly art videos have a great day we'll see you guys again real soon